First of all, I want to apologize for being so late uh, on getting this uh, video out and starting this new series. I had some issues come up uh, that required uh, about uh, three or four weeks of, uh, of my time, and I wasn't able to do any more videos. But uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started with this. This one is an introduction to uh, more with, that you can do with the Click PLC, more types of applications. I go into talking a little bit about factory applications and municipal applications where the distances are really long and far apart and your radio communication is required. So uh, please pay attention to this video and uh, let's get started. If you uh, like these videos, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps uh, to keep these videos uh, moving forward so we can continue this instruction. Uh, and I appreciate it very much. Hello and welcome to Click 13. This is the 13th video in the series that I'm doing on uh, Click PLC programming. On the last three videos, I was showing you how to uh, interface with an HMI. I was giving you some uh, examples there. And we used um, some example in the PLC programming from pointer addressing from Click 8 to uh, take the data that we wanted to display on the screen and move it into a specific uh, group of words that were used for the, for the display of the screen. On the HMI, I could have gone into more detail with more examples, but it would have been just more programming um, of things that uh, you can very easily pick up from where you're at right now. An HMI, a small HMI like that, is typically tied to a small PLC, like the, like the little click PLC, and they're dedicated to an individual machine or part of a process. Um, let's give you an example. Say this is a, a factory and you have some very large drying machines, a, a whole range of drying machines, maybe seven or eight of them, and uh, these are large industrial drying machines that, um, for whatever the product is that they're making. Um, say, for example, each one is loaded with 300 pounds. The dryer has to tilt up so the door opens automatically. Uh, the 300-pound load of the product is, is put into it. The door closes. It, the machine rotates back to the normal uh, front standing position, uh, and then it begins whatever the cycle it is for that product. So maybe you have five or six different products that you're using, and each one has different drying cycles, different drying temperatures, different drying times. On the HMI, maybe you would select, okay, this is product number four, and on product number four, it would pull up a recipe. Now, the recipe it pulls up is very similar to what we did with the uh, address picker. Uh, we put in a, a certain loom number, and it went grabbed that information that we wanted, and it pulled it up into a certain uh, set of data words so that we could display it on the screen or whatever. Well, this would be very, very similar as a recipe. You just put in whatever whatever product it is, and it goes and grabs the data words that has uh, the information for there. It would have the uh, cycle times. It would have the series of cycles that it's going through. Uh, it would have uh, the temperatures that it's supposed to dry at or whatever. Uh, it would have everything it needs in there for that particular uh, product that you're making. And on the screen, it would show up as, uh, say, for example, this is uh, product number four, whatever you want to call product number four. Uh, and then it would say that what step it's in in the cycle, it's in the loading cycle, it um, has so many more seconds to go for the loading cycle to be complete. Uh, then it'll tell you how much time is left for the full cycle so that the operators would know, okay, we've got 45 minutes left before we have to initiate the, a new load or have a new load ready to put in this one and so forth, that kind of information on the screen. It makes it very, very simple to use, very straightforward, exactly the same type of programming that we've already showed you. But I think at this point, it's time to take it one step further. PLCs, the most common that you've thought of so far, is the example that I've just given you. It's a factory of some type. You have a PLC controlling a particular little machine somewhere, and that's it. But in addition to factory automation, there's also municipality applications. The two primary applications for uh, small PLCs, uh, like the Click PLC, are going to be factory control for an individual machine, uh, typically also connected to a, a small HMI, and a lot of times linked back uh, to a, some type of a centralized um, system for monitoring and control. Uh, and the other one is going to be municipal. Now, the, the municipal uh, is, a, is a different horse. Uh, for one, because you don't really have all the equipment right there in one location. Pretty much everything on the municipal is going to be spread out in long distances. And because of that, you need a way to be able to bring the data back in to the centralized location. And we're going to call the centralized location a SCADA system. You'll hear that term more. We'll go into it a little bit later. But SCADA is actually 
uh, SCADA, which means Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. Uh, it's just a fancy word for saying that we're collecting all the data and bringing it in back to, into this one particular place. And plus, we can start and stop equipment from here. Uh, we just send it out to the remote location or wherever. From the, the municipality, you'll have a lot of different applications, a lot of different areas where data needs to be collected from. Say, for example, you have a, a river. You've crossed over this bridge many, many times. You've seen uh, this small a uh, solar panel there with a little antenna poking up, usually a Yagi, a, a directional antenna, and it's going to be pointing back typically to, a, say, a water tower, which is a very high point uh, so that gets a good line of sight to an antenna that's up there somewhere. Um, and it'll be um, reading continually the water level of the, of the river. And every once in a while, the SCADA or centralized system send out a command uh, to that location requesting the current water level. And it'll record this information somewhere in, say, maybe a SQL database or something like this so that uh, the data is recorded. In that, app, uh, in that location, typically you're going to have something like a little small PLC like a click. You're going to have a, a radio, maybe a similar radio to, to this one right here. This is a, a banner radio. We'll talk about this in a few minutes. Um, and uh, you'll have it connected to some type of antenna like the Yagi antenna. But you'll have a, a battery, a PLC, and uh, the radio control in there, and then whatever the sensor is to measure the level uh, in there. And this will all be sealed up and water protected. That's just one example. Say, for example, they've got uh, three water towers. They've got uh, five wells or six wells. Well, each well will also have its own little PLC, its own little radio, its own little uh, battery uh, in there so that uh, it can uh, tell the uh, pumps to start and stop on the wells. Uh, send information back as requested from the central system. Um, and uh, so you've got uh, five or six wells. You've got uh, three water towers. Each water tower would have its own PLC as well uh, with its uh, battery backup so that uh, it can send information back as requested for whatever the uh, water level in the tower is. Then in addition to the freshwater system, you'll also have the wastewater system. Call it sewage plant if you want to. It's um, uh, the wastewater treatment plant. So from there, um, you've got maybe you've got uh, eight, ten uh, lift stations out there. Lift stations because the sewage is getting to a level that's at a very, very low place, and it has to be pumped up to a higher level so it can get to the processing plant. Uh, each one of these uh, lift stations has uh, pumps. Uh, it'll have its own little PLC, its own little battery, and its own uh, antenna. Or radio and antenna. So you have that group there. Then at the wastewater treatment plant itself, uh, you've got a lot of other equipment there. You've got the screen separators. You have the clarifiers. Um, you have the uh, circulation pumps. Uh, you have the dewatering system. Um, and maybe you've got pumps for a discharge because instead of going into a creek or something like this after it's been purified, Maybe it gets sent out to three miles away or four miles away to a, a, maybe a 100-acre field where it's a, they call it a spray field, where they're spraying this uh, discharge water on the field uh, and allowing it to soak back in at that, at that point. Um, you need to be able to remotely have that information sent back, to, uh, back into the uh, main system. You need to be able to control the pumps uh, for the spraying, uh, also the pumps for the discharge to send it that two or three miles away. Um, but there's also valves that have to be opened and closed, uh, and all this stuff works together. They're usually at the wastewater treatment plant, there's a, a centralized PLC system uh, that controls the, the processes there at the centralized uh, place, and the, most of the communications will be going back and forth uh, through it. In a small system like this, you may have another 25 uh, small PLCs with radios on them just to control uh, the water treatment and water, water processing. In this next group of videos, I'll be teaching you um, how to set up the radio communications, the send and receive uh, commands. And this will take probably about three videos, and we'll maybe even start to touch in a little bit about what a SCADA system is and how, it's, how it works. All right, so with all that, let's get started. Well, this is basically the radio I showed you a while ago. This is uh, Banner Engineering. I've got a couple of these, and that's what I'll be using for the uh, demos. Um, here you can see this is uh, mounts, uh, designed to mount inside the uh, control panel itself. This is actually the radio connection here, the little coax connector. 
Um, normally, the, you'll use a, another cable with a bulkhead on it to go from here up to the top of the control panel. And at the top of the control panel, that bulkhead will give you a watertight seal. So that's where you would mount the antenna or the extension uh, coax to, to go to your an antenna base all the way up to your antenna wherever you mount it up at. Um, you can move down over here so you can see what the price is here. The uh, list price is uh, uh, $337, which is about normal for this, this type of radio. Um, this tunnel here is for your discrete inputs and outputs, analog inputs and outputs, your power supply uh, coming in, uh, and your uh, RS-485 connections for your Modbus uh, communications. These sw rot rotating switches here are to set the Modbus address. These switches here are for setting the mode, whether it's going to be a repeater or however that uh, you're going to be using it. And once you set the mode, there's a little push button up here that you push for it to accept the mode. Uh, you can see this one is operating on the 900 megahertz, 1 watt. 900 megahertz, 1 watt does not require an FCC license. Uh, so you can just stick them anywhere without uh, having to worry about uh, a license or whatever. Um, this is a 10 to 30 volts DC power supply coming in. This particular model has two discrete inputs, two analog inputs, two discrete outputs, two analog outputs. Um, there's some bells and whistles for it and so forth. We're not going to get into all that right now. Uh, this is uh, another name brand over here. This one is uh, Layered Connectivity. Uh, they're sold through Mouser Electronics. And you can see uh, right now the price is about $344 uh, a piece. Lead time is very long, which is normal for a lot of stuff right now. Um, they have three in stock, apparently. They can ship immediately. Uh, this is what I wanted to show you. The, the frequency is 902, 928 megahertz. That is 1 watt. It's RS-232, RS-485 uh, communication link. Power supply voltage is 10 to 28 volts DC. So you can see there's a lot of different companies that make uh, this. They're a little bit hard to find unless you know what you're looking for. Most of them are sold through a distributor network, uh, like Banner, for example. It's sold through distributors. Um, you may be able to get it online at some of these places, but going through a distributor, you'll get the industrial discount that you deserve. So uh, this is the uh, radio that we will be using. This is the banner radio. Now, I'm not asking you to go out and purchase these uh, for this, but uh, please uh, watch the video so that you understand and, and see why we're using the, the radios, how we're using the radios, and so forth. Um, I have two of these. I know I may possibly have three of these radios. Uh, if I do, then we'll go into the network software uh, with these as well. Uh, for the PLC that we'll be using, uh, this is the same model we've been using through all of them. Uh, we'll be using this particular click model. It's got analog inputs and outputs, discrete inputs and relay outputs. Plus, it also has uh, this communication port right here, the uh, RS-485. Uh, this one uh, is for Modbus and ASCII, so we'll also be talking some about the Modbus addressing as we get into the send and receive uh, commands. Please uh, watch the uh, uh, next uh, couple of videos here as we go into uh, showing you how to set up the uh, click PLC for remote communications from uh, long distances. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about radios, about line of sight. Uh, we'll get into uh, maybe a little bit into what a SCADA system is and how it works, uh, and uh, data communications, data collections, uh, and every bit of this will be done uh, through the radios uh, and uh, the ones, the PLCs that will be closer together. Now I have several of these PLCs, so I may end up actually making a network with, say, uh, three PLCs strung together uh, for the uh, Modbus communications, in addition, two or three uh, remote PLCs set up with the radio communications on the same system. So this is quite a big step forward. So please don't uh, miss any of the next videos. Thank you very much.